up you guys it's Simon welcome back to my channel so for today's video um first off I want to apologize for all of the weird um audio that we've had in recent videos it's been very low qual for some reason I recently switched laptops so uh, I think switching back to um, using, uh, you know, a new computer has made my mic a little weird, but I tried to fiddle with the settings, so hopefully the audio is a little bit better, um, in this week's video. So, um, yeah, uh, welcome back to my channel. Um, so obviously for today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit of a story time, but before we get into that, I wanted to talk a little bit about the illustration you guys are seeing on screen. Um, so this is the Patreon line art for June, and unlike the one I did in February, where I tried to sort of just make as many sort of like mini characters I could so that hopefully you'd be able to find a pair that resembles either you or your relationship. Um, I felt like there was just too many ways to represent pride and different kinds of relationships that one could have um, and I really wanted everyone that got the chance to color this to be able to put themselves into it so uh, I went with a pretty simple design with a flag and a shirt with no lines so that you could incorporate um, as many different lines obviously different plots pride flags have different colors and ratios so I figured it'd be easier to just input uh, that yourself so um, I also decided to draw just like a very thin light hairline instead of having like already done hair so that you could also uh, like you know draw your own care hair or create a character uh, whatever you want I just wanted it to be something that was very personal because for a lot of people pride is very personal so yeah there is the illustration but one more thing before we get into the story if you do like the art that's currently going on on screen maybe take a second to subscribe because you just might be able to get your hands on some um you guys already know that we just hit 1000 subscribers oh my god um, that's really cool. Um, uh, so, uh, you guys know I've been deciding what we're going to be doing to celebrate and I have decided that we're going to do, um, some form of draw this in your style that will be, uh, ready to go either sometime this week or sometime next week. Um, I'm hoping for this week, but we'll see how that goes. Um, but I wanted to see what you guys wanted to see for the winner. Uh, I'm currently decided between a commission or a video where I draw your guys' OC. I kind of want there to be a couple different winners either way. Um, so if you've got one that you prefer or one that you're hoping for in the case that you do win, please leave a comment down below or head down into the discussion tab on my channel and answer the comment there so that I can see what you guys are hoping for more. There may also be, um, towards the end of the draw this in your style, um, a poll on my Instagram story to help you guys decide there as well. Um, but altogether, I'm going to take the majority of every single area that you guys have voted on and then try to get it from there. So now, on to the story. So some quick backstory. Um, I lived in an apartment complex that was a little bit more like townhomes, uh, but we had a landlord and obviously, therefore, maintenance men. I also had three cats. There was Tiggins, Sadie, and Max. Max was a boy and to my knowledge the loving father of all of Tiggins' kittens. He's also the center of the story that I'm about to tell. Um, Max was my dad's cat and he was this huge, fluffy, brown calico. A very incredibly handsome boy. So I had to ask my mom what happened because I was a child at the time that this story takes place around 9 or 10 and obviously I'm 21. That's not far off but uh, my brain doesn't work. I'm very bad at remembering things so I only remember uh, sort of vaguely um, him being missing and then him coming home but not really the details of anything. So essentially according to my mom she saw the maintenance man catching and trapping all of the stray cats in the neighborhood so she went up to him and asked if he knew which of the cats were ours and he said yes so she went on her way but within the next week we realized that Max was missing so obviously uh, my mom goes to call the maintenance man and describes Max and he confirms that despite saying he knew which cats belonged to us that he took him and dropped him off at a local shelter <laughs> so he gives my mom the name of this shelter and she can't find this shelter anywhere in town but she funds, finds one outside of town with a completely different name and she then asks if that's where he took Max and um, at first he wouldn't even answer her calls but eventually uh, she managed to get a hold of him 
And as soon as she did, he changed his story and said that he actually did not take him to the shelter. Where did he take him, supposedly? A sanctuary's house that did not want their location to be known. So, my mom calls the police, <laughs> um, and eventually gets the maintenance guy to admit that they were not dropped off somewhere safe and good like a shelter, uh, or some mysterious cat sanctuary. No, he dropped them off in an alley downtown, just outside. <laughs> so, um, fast forward for about two months later and my mom is home and talking to her friend in the kitchen that has like this glass door that overlooks the back porch so obviously it's clear you can see everything um and she's talking about this whole story and how devastated <laughs> how devastated she is about max um and this friend hadn't really seen max before so she begins to kind of describe him uh similar to how i did before you know uh he's brown he's a calico he's very fluffy long hair um and as she's describing him she looks out over the back porch and there is sitting a cat <laughs> so she says he kind of looks a lot like that cat wait <laughs> and to our disbelief there was max sat on the porch and covered in grass and stickers and we had to spend the entire night picking these stickers out of his fur and uh if you don't know what stickers are um I know some places don't have them, they are very, very abundant in every area that I've ever lived, lucky me. Um, stickers are basically these little spurs, I guess you could say. They're very, they're like weeds that just happen to grow these incredibly hard and sharp little things and they will stick to your clothing and your shoes and everything you own and you will track them into your house no matter what and you are bound to step on them and sometimes they are so deep into your skin that if you pull them out you will bleed so yeah stickers are not fun and it he was just covered in the poor things i felt so bad for him so yeah we did spend the entire night picking those stickers out of his fur um we actually genuinely have no idea how max managed to find his way home because obviously we did not find him we just assumed that you know he was dropped off downtown he must have blended in with you know all of the other cats by now or ran off somewhere it's been so long since we'd seen him so we tried looking for him obviously but uh we were pretty much um we'd lost hope that we were gonna find our boy again and he just showed up at the house so we're assuming that somehow he managed to walk or find his way home or maybe the maintenance man uh felt guilty and you know found max and brought him back because obviously he did literally steal our cat and drop him off in the middle of nowhere which is kind of a messed up thing to do um but yeah obviously we're really glad that uh somehow he did end up finding his way home um so that's it for this week's video you guys i hope you enjoyed this story um there were a lot of other weird things that this maintenance guy did that I personally don't have any memories of. I just know that my mom did not like him and that this was just icing on the cake, it seems like. So yeah, um, that was the story about how our maintenance man stole our cat. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm sorry if it was a little bit short. Obviously, we're going off of um, something that happened 10 or so years ago, so it's uh, not as fresh as it used to be, but I definitely felt like it was still um, kind of just a weird enough thing for me to tell you guys about. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, like I said, don't forget to subscribe and also leave a comment down below um, saying what you would want to see from the Draw the Singer style. I hope you guys are excited for it. Um, maybe you guys have any ideas of what I should draw. I don't know yet. Um, I'm very excited though. And thank you again. Thank you so, so much for 1000 subscribers. That is insane. I love you guys so, so much. Um, and speaking of thank yous, I want to give a big shout out to my patron, Elise Thompson. Thank you so much for continuing to support me every single month. Uh, Elise will be getting her hands on this line art, so if you'd like to too, please go check out the Patreon. There's tons of stuff on there for you guys as well. Um, so yeah, uh, that's it for this video, you guys. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys uh, next Thursday. Bye!